Okay, welcome to Spencer Trade Review, uh, November 12, 2012. Two stocks we're going to be looking at today. Um, we allowed a vote, and there were the winner was GILD, and <clears throat> DHI came in a close second, so I'm going to actually be doing two stocks this evening, a little bit different background than we're used to. I'm actually uh, doing this one from home, and I'm in a little bit of a good mood because when I came home and logged on to my trading platform, I saw that because of the problems I had this morning, um, one of my executions buying Facebook hadn't been reported to me and I actually was long it um, all day for the, for the up move, so I'm kind of in a good mood. Um, I thought that today was a pretty good day and there was a bunch of good stuff. GILD um, was an excellent opportunity that we reviewed in the morning meeting and um, turned out to be a pretty good stock. So this is what I was involved in. Um, we talked about in the morning meeting how it's been trending very strongly higher over the last few months. Um, had this big, caught our attention here on the breakout above $60 mid-September. Second day had some really nice follow through and on the third day had a really big move up to 66. And since that point in time, spent about two months um, trying to work higher and actually had gotten as high as $70 a share where it failed to have another breakout. Um, but today's positive drug news was a catalyst for a breakout above $70. Um, so the backdrop on this one is very strong, big picture on the higher time frames, and it was breaking out after a two month consolidation period. So our first look on this one was on the long side. Um, here's what it looked like this morning. And we can see that when we came in this morning, it was being bought at $71 a share, and that's where we drew our first support. Um, and then into the open, let me just zoom in a little bit more on this one. So we can see this. Um, what we saw was um, when it broke out above the pre-market high, it was 71.85, and so that was my kind of next area above there to um, to possibly buy it as on a pullback um, on the open. So the way that I actually was involved in this one was right before the market opened, it dropped out um, to the 71.85. My bid got hit. And as the market opened, um, it spiked up to $73 a share, and I got out. Um, and then if we zoom in, and again, what we, what we always like to say is there are no trends um, in the first 30 minutes. So if we're in a position and we're making money um, in that first 30 minutes, we'll look to, to get out and get back in, um, looking for a trend after 10 a.m. So had that right on the open. Um, I got hit when it pulled back down. I was actually very patient about this. I think one of the things that some people tried to do was they saw how strong it was. It was above the pre-market high and there was some buying here. Um, and actually, if we look on the tick chart, we can see this probably a little bit better. So you can see right on the open, um, <clears throat> drives up, and there was some selling here around 73 and a quarter. And it came back down and there was some buying around 72.80 and I think some people were trying this on the long side. You can see this buyer dropped here um, and eventually came lower. And I, I was pretty patient about this. Um, and I did not get back involved until it came all the way back down um, to my original buy price right before the open. And I got back in here um, at 71.85 and sold it. Um, got flat into this spike right up here to 72.5. And you can see um, this was a little bit later. So I could have actually held it, but it happened pretty quickly and I felt confident it would pull back in problem is on this in terms of execution was it pulled back down to 72 bucks and I did not get back in so um, I missed this this trade right here um, and I would have been in a position of strength and I can I was off the desk probably by 1045 or so I had a bunch of things to do I was on some calls um, and if I bought it right back here um, I could have been in for this move where it consolidated and then for a breakout above 73. Now that trade never played out. Um, it never got above 73 and a quarter and it didn't have a second leg. And what some people on the desk did was, and we can look at the 15 minute, what they did was when it failed to break to the upside and broke um, lower here, they started looking for a short trade. I, For me personally, when a stock, when a, when a drug stock gaps up big and then doesn't sell off in the first hour um, below either this morning support of 71.80 or even below 71. I don't really want to take those trades on the short side. I understand why people do them. You know, they look at it and they say, hey, it failed at the morning high. It's holding a little bit lower. Maybe I can capture a move. Um, but to me, it's just, it's a lower percentage play. I'd much rather be short a stock 
um, like Seth, which, oh no, did I lose charts? Oh boy, it looks like, let me just see if I, I may have actually lost the Lightspeed platform was actually off it's after eight o'clock and I may have actually lost being able to, um, so let me see if I can get DHI. Oh, but I can get DHI. Okay, so apparently I can't get CEPH. Um, but anyway, what I want to see is actually DHI. Um, I want to I want to be shorting a stock that actually moves down first thing in the morning. Um, a stock that actually spends all day after a huge gap, um, consolidating well above the initial gap. Um, I'm not going to take that trade. And the main reason is I don't want to lose focus of the fact that if it pulls back to the 7180. And I see buying there, I can get long again for a move up into the close. And what we saw into the close was the stock went up about two and a half points. So again, some of the traders on the desk took this short here. Um, I'm not sure how they traded it. It's not a trade that I make. I can see why guys would take it, but because you can see that it broke the uptrend line, it's consolidating lower, they're looking for the reversal trade. For me, I'm gonna take the short trade if on the open it drives lower below 7180, then gets below 71, I'll look for the gap fill. If it doesn't do that, I'm happy to buy it on a pull into support and look for it to break out at the end of the day above 73 and a quarter. That's actually kind of how that, that played out. But again, I was off the desk um, after this point in time and was not involved. Um, other than the fact that I did come back in and I did see, I was actually on a call and I saw when this guys were making money short here, and I'm sure they covered into this, at least some hopefully, um, I did actually see a buyer step in and buy about 100,000 shares right at the 7180 level. Um, right here, you can see this volume spike right here. Somebody stuck it and I almost um, jumped off my call to buy it, but I did not. And you can see it's kind of an option there. You can see the buyer step back in at 7180. You're probably risking to below the spike low here, about 30 cents. And right into the end of the day, it drove up uh, two and a half points. So risk 30 cents, um, went up about two and a half points. That's pretty good. Um, so overall, the idea on this one is if we just recap it, Long term was trending higher after two months of consolidation, broke above the $70. That's where our focus initially is on the long side. Um, and for me, um, maybe if it closes at the high, it even becomes a swing trade. The second stock that we wanted to take a look at was DHI. This was one that was mentioned um, for new traders on the desk as a much lower risk, um, less volatile name. Here's what the 10 day looks like. <clears throat> And the way we wanted to trade this one was initially we were looking, it was breaking to the upside and I thought if it pulled back to 21 right on the open that you could risk maybe five or 10 cents here to look for a move um, for it to break above uh, to 2160 or maybe even up to 2180 a uh, share. And so if we zoom in on today's action um, on the open, Here's the one minute. And that kind of played out right on the open. So right at 930, this was the um, this was the low here. And this is exactly what we were looking for in the morning meeting was buy it on this drop out here and then maybe see if you can make, make 40, 50 cents, half of the ATR, um, or actually the ATR. Um, and it pulled back one more time, held higher, and actually looked pretty good um, as a long, but the conference call started at 10 o'clock. And so what you get it during when a conference call starts is you can get a continuation um, of the move and we saw it hold that 21 level. Uh, it could have continued higher, but the conference call started and it was sold pretty aggressively um, through the 21 level. It actually spiked. Actually, if we go today, we can go to the tick chart and kind of see what this looks like. And we can see that it took out the morning low. And now what we tell our traders is during the conference call, you can trade it if you are listening to the call to see if anything unusual is talked about. Um, but it clearly trended during the entire call. And the question becomes, the call probably ended somewhere in here between 10.45 and 11. Um, how would you trade it at that point? And at this point, it's clearly in a downtrend. The call ends. Um, what you wanna see is, and what we saw was this tight consolidation. We wanna go to the five minute chart for possible entries on the short side. And we know that it couldn't get back above 2050 and it clearly was being sold here in the low 40s. And this is where I'd wanna enter. The mistake that a lot of traders make 
is they will look just to get involved when it makes the new low. It's much better once a trend has been clearly established and the stock is having trouble bouncing and just moving sideways. You want to get in on the upper part of this range so you're in a position of strength when you get the break here. Um, and in this case, what did it do? It broke to the downside. Um, I think if I see something like this on the five minute where it makes a low here at 1965, I highlight that. And then I look and I see, okay, it's holding here. Um, but $20 a share, I'm going to use that as a reference because it's the big whole number. So what you're going to do here is when it starts to roll over, if it doesn't make a new low and starts ticking up, you might cover a little bit. And then you know what? You're going to cover more above $20 a share. Um, in terms of whether or not you want to get flat, you got to zoom back out to the 15 minute. And what we can see here is um, it did actually on the 15 minute have two green bars in a, a row, closed above 20. This might have actually gotten you flat right here. Um, depending on you know if how much you wanted to give it um, nothing wrong there's you know our traders different traders will handle this differently if you wanted to actually give it all the way back to above this 2050 for 25 percent of the position that's fine um, it really is a question of the, the person's trading style um, if you did actually get flat here and it failed and came right back down and you saw it holding below 20 there's nothing wrong with a reinitiating a position and then being in a position of strength when it takes out um, this 1965 area and pressing it into the close. Um, that's a pretty weak stock. So if we zoom out on this one, here's the 10 day 15 minute. Um, the other thing that I, I probably should have referenced is um, you want to keep an eye on prior day support at this 2020 area. That would have been a reason for you, um, more reason for you on this break here below this area. Anybody who bought into coming into earnings, they became at, they were then out of the money. Um, as well. Um, so that's that's really it. I was not involved in DHI um, because it, it really started to trend after I was off the desk. Um, and I'm not sure if people took advantage of this reversal, but just remember when stocks have earnings and then they reverse in the conference call, um, you want to you want to stick with that direction until something dramatically, dramatically, dramatically changes. Um, that's it. Thanks for joining us on, on this trade review and uh, we'll, we'll do one next week.